Nintendo definitely could be considered the king of handhelds. I mean, if you just go off of the sheer number of every iteration of handheld they've produced and sold, there's not much in the way of arguing here. There's not much room there if you just go off of numbers anyway. Both the Game Boy line and the DS line both hold the number two and three spot of best-selling consoles of all time, which yes, that includes everything. All handhelds and consoles, Nintendo has two out of the top three spots. Now, if you scroll down on that same list to the 10th place spot is the Game Boy Advance, a handheld that was and still is very impressive to this day, in my opinion. Especially, you know, at that time, if you compared it to the previous Nintendo handhelds, it was pretty damn impressive. Now, at that time of the Game Boy Advance, there really wasn't much in the way of competition when it came to handhelds. Not in North America, anyway. Now, in Japan during this time, you did have the Wonder Swan line of, you know, handhelds, the color and the regular one, which, despite it having, a, you know, a bit of a cult following, its numbers really didn't fare that well, comparing it to other handhelds, anyway. Now, its line of devices sold maybe about a half million more than the N-Gage. Yeah, the N-Gage. Now, I remember being hyped as all hell for the Game Boy Advance. It had a fairly decent launch lineup with Super Mario Advance, F-Zero Maximum Velocity, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, Fire Pro Wrestling, and Super Dodgeball Advance all being day one titles back on June 11, 2001. I remember lining up early at my local mall's EB Games at the time thinking it was going to be crowded, like it was going to be crazy. I only had the uh, Glacier Game Boy Advance pre-ordered, and I didn't pre-order any games, so I was hoping to grab a few things before, you know, stuff sold out. That's that's why I lined up early. Well, I, I mean, in reality, I was the only dumbass waiting until the store opened to pick up my pre-order. Nobody else showed up until after the fact. So I grabbed Mario Advance, Fire Pro Wrestling, and Super Dodgeball Advance. Now, I know I'd seen all these games in magazines at the time, and it, it did kind of look to me to be like a portable Super Nintendo, which was one of the reasons I was really hyped for it. I've seen so many people over the years either say it seemed this way, or they thought Nintendo was just selling us old technology at that time, you know, by shrinking down the Super Nintendo into a portable, and that we weren't really getting anything new. So the Game Boy Advance, it, it was not a portable Super Nintendo. But it did seem that way and feel that way, even to myself and many others. There was many Super Nintendo games that were ported over to the Game Boy Advance, so I could see why a lot of people felt that way. Now, the technical specs do spell a different story. At that time, I don't think I really thought about specs in the way that we did prior with the bits. Like, hey, we got 16 bits, 32 bits, 64 bits, biatch. Or how we do now with CPU and GPU specs. How many teraflops that thing got, yo? Like, I didn't really think like that, I think, at this time. Like, before it and after that, yeah, but at that time, maybe because there was just no competition with handhelds, so didn't really think of that stuff. I, I don't know. But the Game Boy Advance specs, they, they were quite different than the Super Nintendo, but also, the Game Boy Advance is a handheld, so there's going to be some limitations regardless of specs. So the Game Boy Advance had a 32-bit CPU, where the Super Nintendo had a 16-bit CPU. Color-wise, they both shared the same 15-bit RGB palette of 32,768 colors, but both had different capabilities of how many colors were on screen, like different colors, and how the, they were used. Now, the Game Boy Advance, it, it seemed to beat out the Super Nintendo when it came to colors on screen at once, but all those specs and the way everything worked, it, it's just beyond the scope of this video. I just wanted to point out that they are two very different machines with different capabilities, but as they were both essentially mostly 2D sprite-based machines, there's going to be a lot of similarities visually with the games that were on both systems. Now, there was one issue that wasn't noticeable to many until, you know, a, a little later on anyway. Since the original GBA was not backlit, a lot of developers made the games with brighter colors in an attempt to make the games look better because the screen was so dim. But nowadays, this can look pretty garish on lit up screens. This is all remedied with color restoration hacks for original hardware play, or through filters and different options within Game Boy Advance emulators, so not too much to worry about now. Now, later games did have video options to compensate for what type of screen you played on. I know for sure Final Fantasy Tactics Advance had a color mode option to select from, and I believe there was three different options. 
based on how you were playing. So that was nice that developers started implementing that depending on the way you played. Now the one cool thing was both of these machines, they were capable of some fairly basic 3D graphics. I mean, going back, I mean, when the Super Nintendo came out and whatnot during its lifespan, maybe that was more impressive then with the Game Boy Advance coming out in the early 2000s. I think it was still impressive for such a little device, a little handheld, and some of these games do kind of hold up to this day, but you know, the Game Boy Advance, it did go on with it quite a bit more than the Super Nintendo did with its Super FX chip games. The Game Boy Advance had a host of 3D games released for it. Some were quite impressive, some not so much. I don't really remember the 3D games for the Game Boy Advance really being any kind of huge selling point for me. Not at that time anyway. So I, I really don't remember playing too many of the 3D type games for the Game Boy Advance during its lifespan. But I, I have played quite a few of them. And, you know, really, the, the Game Boy Advance's overall library is what left the lasting impression on me. I couldn't really point to one game being a must-have title, as there's just so many memorable experiences, so many awesome games for the Game Boy Advance when it came to role-playing games, platformers, like I said, some of those weird little 3D games. Every genre was represented for this device and represented fairly well. A lot of exclusive games came out for this system. A lot of stuff that just has never been ported elsewhere. Just a lot of unique, interesting experiences for the Game Boy Advance. Consider it a portable Super Nintendo or, or just something entirely different. Doesn't really matter much. I, I just feel the Game Boy Advance just has so many classics that they're still worth playing today and it remains one of my favorite systems to play. I mean, do I play it in handheld mode? on an actual Game Boy Advance, not too often. I actually prefer playing on my you know, TV and things like Mr. FPGA have really brought that out. I love having an FPGA implementation of the Game Boy Advance. So I play it like that quite often. A lot of times, even prior to that, more so back, you know, before Mr. came out, I was always playing on the Game Boy Player for the GameCube using the gc loader loading up a game boy interface the games look amazing on that system with that software there's so many different ways to play game boy advance and either way i mean as long as you're having fun right and there's just so many damn titles for the game boy advance that i think were fun let me know down below in the comment section what your favorite game boy advance games are of all time i just want this video to be a little bit of a celebration of a handheld that i personally have a lot of love for, and I know a lot of you guys out there do as well. So thanks for watching. Really do appreciate it. And with that said, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom. Bye.